second. Okay. Good evening, First United Methodist Church family. Um, I was able to accomplish a really cool thing this past week. Um, it took a lot of pushing from some of my professors and advisors, but I finished my um, official first album, uh, solo piano album. And if you're interested in checking that out, you can uh, look it up on iTunes, on Spotify, you can stream it, you can buy it. Um, and uh, it's something uh, near and dear because it deals with a lot of experiences and a lot of people that I've had to um, not deal with, but with things that I've experienced and stuff that I've felt through and through the power of music, um, I have was able to overcome those things. And the cool thing about my music that I feel is that um, I was um, raised primarily on movie soundtracks. And so what I love about movie soundtracks is how you can use music to inward manipulate the audience into feeling what it is you want them to feel. So, for example, something like this can feel a bit nostalgic, can feel murky, can be confusing, mysterious, something something full of anxiety or something and so something I really love and I want to continue doing is uh, creating music that helps people feel even if it's um, something they've never felt before and I remember years ago there was um, there was a guy who hadn't really he was having a really hard time and he had he had a very um, stone cold heart, and he um, he heard some of the music, and he he told me he he thought about and he felt about things that he hasn't thought or felt about in a while, and that was something that really struck with me, and that's something I really want to continue uh, giving. So, 
If you get a chance, if you have iTunes, if you have Spotify, if you have YouTube, even you can check it out on those. So I want to play um, a kind of a medley of a few of my pieces.
Wednesday service. This is the beginning of the Lenten season leading up to Holy Week and Easter. It's a very special time where we set our lives aside as disciples and recognize the sacrifice that Jesus made and we in turn sacrifice something in our lives that we either give up or we add to our lives. Some people give up something that is very pleasurable, like chocolate or ice cream or something like that that you want to give up. And, and other folks say, you know, well, I'm going to add something to my plate. I'm going to serve in this way, or I'm going to read this book or more scripture. And so as we go through these 40 days of Lent, it's a reminder of the 40 days that Jesus was tempted it's a reminder of the sacrifice that Jesus made on the cross. And so when we give up something and we, we want that, it's a small reminder of the tremendous sacrifice that Jesus Christ made on our behalf. And so I welcome you, whether you're at home or whether you're here at the church, and I want to thank you for coming. And so we want to begin our service with a prayer, and so please bow your heads and hearts with me. Lord, Holy One, have mercy on us. We confess our sins to you tonight. We have fallen short of your glory. And without your mercy and grace, we would simply be dust. Tonight we look forward to repentance. Lord, as we enter into this Lenten season, be near to us. May your presence surround us. May you speak to us and may we hear you. And may we speak back to you. Help us by your Holy Spirit to feel the conviction of repentance of our sin. Help us by your Holy Spirit to have the strength to say, I'm sorry. To say, forgive me, Lord. And then to turn around in 180 degrees and go in the way of righteousness. Thank you, Lord, that Easter is coming. Death has no sting, no victory because of Jesus' resurrection. Glory and honor and praise be his name. Lord, be with us tonight as we begin this Lenten season, whether we're at home or whether we're here at the church. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So I want to remind you that, that, that are at home that we mailed to you a little envelope. And in it had... Um, the ashes of the palm leaves from last Easter that I burned. And so in this, this world of COVID and knowing that many of you would not be able to come, everyone in the church got a letter with that little envelope. So when we get to the near, near the end of the service, I'm going to walk you through how to dip your finger in there and then put the cross on your forehead saying the words, from dust you came to dust you return." Your sins are forgiven in Jesus' name. So you may want to get that envelope uh, with that packet of dust and then uh, have that ready. 
Our opening hymn is Be Still My Soul. It's on page 534. The words are on the screen. Let's stand together as we sing Be Still My Soul, all three verses. Be still my soul, the Lord is on your side. Bear patiently the cross of grief or pain. Leave to your God to order and provide. of readings for our liturgy. I will read the light print and the congregation dark print. Terry will lead you through that. I lift my eyes to the hills. From whence does my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. The Lord would not let your foot be moved. The Lord who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, the one who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. The sun shall not smite you by day. Nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil and will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. You may be seated. I'm going to invite Charles and Lexi and Peter to lead us through a beautiful um, praise song titled Cornerstone. The words will be on the screen.
evening. Joel 2, 1 through 2 and 12 through 7 says, Blow the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm of my holy hill. Let all who live in the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and blackness. Let dawn spreading across the mountains, a large and mighty army comes, such as never was in ancient times, nor ever will be in the ages to come. Even now, declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting and weeping and mourning. Render your heart and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in love. And he relents in sending calamity. Who knows, he may turn and relent, and leave behind a blessing, grain offerings and drink offerings for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, declare a holy feast, call the sacred assembly, gather the people, consecrate the assembly, bring together the elders, gather the children, those nursing at the breast, let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her chamber. Let the priest who minister before the Lord weep between the 
in the altar. Let them say, spare your people, Lord. Do not make your inheritance an object of scorn. A byword among the nations. Why should they say among the people, where is their God? What is Ash Wednesday? Ash Wednesday is the holy day within the Christian tradition to commemorate the beginning of 40 days of sacrifice for the individual Christian, leading us to Easter, which is called the season of Lent. When movie actor and producer Mel Gibson released the epic blockbuster movie, The Passion of the Christ, he did so on Ash Wednesday, 2004. Suddenly, many evangelical Protestants woke up to what Ash Wednesday's significance is. Since then, Ash Wednesday has brought a new level of consciousness to the minds of many Christians beside Catholics who have been holding this tradition for the past thousand years. Perhaps you have seen a person in the spring of the year go to work or be in a public place with a black cross embolized across their forehead. When I see this, I think to myself, what a powerful public witness. Many of us have not really given much thought to Ash Wednesday, except to learn that it is the first of the 40 days that come before Easter. These 40 days do not include Sunday, because Sunday is a celebration of Jesus' resurrection. When early Christians extended the call for prayer and fasting to 40 days to consider Christ's atoning sacrifice for our sins upon the cross, Sunday celebration, the day Christ arose, was not a part of Lent. So, four days this week, counting today, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, equals four days, and then six weeks of six days before Easter Sunday, four plus 36 equals 40. So that's how we get to that number. For 10 centuries, Christians around the world have honored Ash Wednesday, the first day of Lent. So as we gather tonight, we do the same. We're now part of that long procession of Christians who have stopped to commemorate the kickoff of 40 days that anticipate Good Friday and Easter. I want you to know that there's nowhere in the Bible that says that commands us that we should have Easter, I mean, that have um, Ash Wednesday service. Just like there's nowhere in the Bible that says that we should have Christmas Eve services. Just as in the Bible, there's nowhere that it says that we should have Easter celebrations. But within the church, in the process of making disciples, we make these sacred days to help us draw closer to God. And the Lord says that, that when we draw close to the Lord, the Lord will always draw close to us. In Old Testament times, the earliest centuries of the Christians, Christians who repented of persistent sin, had ashes sprinkled on their bodies as a sign of repentance. Even Job repented in dust and ashes, and they wore sackcloth. How many of you know what a burlap bag is? How would you like to wear that for a couple days? <laughs> and then have dirty ashes all over you. Boy, if that isn't a significance of, Lord, I've sinned, I'm going through a difficult time. I don't know what else is. But that was their history. That was their symbolism. How do we observe Ash Wednesday? Of course, we've talked about the ashes on your forehead to indicate that we were sinners in need of grace. However, we haven't mentioned that the words repeat by what is called the imposition of the ashes. Folks, this comes from Genesis chapter 3, verses 19. It helps us understand that you and I come from the tradition and the, the biology of Adam and Eve, who came from the dust of the earth. Do you remember that where it talks about God formed them from the dust of the earth and then breathed into their nostrils? And, and so in Genesis 3, 19, it says, you are dust, and you will return back to dust. Whenever I do a funeral, those are the words that I say when we give them back to God. 
and thus you came, for thus you return. It's a solemn reminder that our time on earth is just but a brief window compared to eternity. And, and so it's a reflection to help us understand that this life that you've been given to you, make it amazing. Make it wonderful. Make it awesome. Because you're only here for a little while, and then God calls us back home. I've always said that there's two things I believe that God wants us to do while we're here on earth. First of all, know God, have a relationship. And then secondly, make the world a better place with your Christian witness. Make the world a better place with the hundred years or less that you've got because from dust you came to dust you will return. In the 90th Psalm, the one and only Moses wrote this, So teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. And so don't take life for granted. Realize that you're only here for a short time. Today I will impose ashes that were burned from the palm leaves of last year's Palm Sunday service. I will place the symbol of the cross on your forehead or the back of your hand to remember the price Christ paid for our sin by dying on a cruel Roman cross. We're going to have a moment of silence where this is your opportunity to say, God, help me stick to my commitment. Because this next 40 days, I'm going to give up such and such. Or for the next 40 days, I'm going to add this to my spiritual discipline as a thank you for Christ's sacrifice. So I say two things to you when you receive the ashes. First, I tell you and remind you, from dust you came, to dust you will return. And then, I don't leave you in darkness. I remind you that your sins are forgiven in Jesus' name. Because that's the gospel. Because the Bible tells us that we do all have sin, but the free gift of God is Jesus Christ. In 1 John 1, 9, it clearly tells us that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us all from all unrighteousness. That's the beauty of it. That's the good news, that even though we may be at a time where we're in sackcloth and ashes, that Jesus' forgiveness clears it all away. So those are the two things that I will tell you. If you look at your bulletin, just a brief understanding of it. I'd like to invite our children's minister to come up. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the early Christians observed with great devotion the days of our Lord's passion and resurrection. And it became a custom to the church that before the Easter celebration, there should be 40-day season of spiritual preparation. During this season, converts to the faith were prepared for holy baptism. It was also a time when persons who had committed serious sins and had separated themselves from the community of faith were reconciled by penance and forgiveness and restored to participation in the life of the church. In this way, the whole congregation was reminded of the mercy and the forgiveness proclaimed in the gospel of Jesus Christ and the need we all have to renew our faith. I invite you, therefore, in the name of the church, to observe a holy Lent by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting, and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's holy word to make a right beginning of repentance and as a mark of our mortal nature, let us now kneel before our Creator and Redeemer. So we're going to have just a moment of silence, and this is just you and God time, asking for forgiveness.
setting something aside that you're going to give up or adding something to. So let's in silence talk to God. Heavenly Father, help us to stick to our commitment and we thank you for your forgiveness and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness to be a new creation before you. Amen. Okay, so now we're going to ask God to bless the ashes. So just a, just a reminder. So this is one bundle of ashes that were left over from Palm Sunday. And so these are what I burn to create the ashes. So it kind of has a kind of a neat connection of Holy Week. Almighty God, you have created out of us dust of the earth. Grant that these ashes may be to us a sign of our mortality and penance, so that we may remember that only by your gracious gift are we given everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. So those of you that are at home, if you would like to open up your little packet of ashes, if you would take your finger and place it in there, give you a little bit of time to do that. And you'll do one cross this way, one cross this way, either on your forehead or your hand. And here we go, folks. From dust you came, to dust you return. Your sins are forgiven. In Jesus' name. Now, those of you that are here, you have two different ways that you can receive the ashes. You come forward one at a time when you're ready, and then um, I will either put it on your hand, you just hold out your hand, or just put your head up there, and then I'll put the cross on there. Now, there's also another, Megan is going to do this a little bit more sanitary with Q-tips, if that's what you would like to do, rather than having my finger on there, you're welcome to do that, and she will say the, the same thing as well. So, Patrick is going to play some soft music. This is your time to come forward for Ash Wednesday. Come. <laughs>
Since this tradition has such a long history, I chose one of the oldest hymns in the hymn book. It's close to 700 years old. Be Thou My Vision. It's on page 451. Let's stand together. The words are on the screen or you can look at it in your hymn book. 451. the peace of Christ, which means we wave and say, God bless you. So turn around and say, God bless you to those that are here. Those of you that are at home, may God bless you. And now we head towards the risen Christ in Easter. May the Lord bless us as we journey on this 40 days that we may draw closer to the Lord and the Lord will draw closer to us. Amen. Amen. God bless you all until we meet again. God bless. Thank you for coming. Thank you.